Christian Eriksen can solve problem that cost Manchester United versus Brighton. Christian Eriksen caught the eye for Manchester United against Brighton after a second half switch. Christian Eriksen shown when he was moved to a deeper role against Brighton. If there was one wish Manchester United fans had for the summer transfer window, it was that their side would sign a proper defensive midfielder before the season started. By half time of their opening game against Brighton, that was apparent to see again. United have focused their midfield needs on trying to bring Frankie de Jong to the club, but 89 days after they first made contact for his signature, he remains a Barcelona player, and might have even more doubts about moving to Old Trafford now. After their first showing of the season, those attempts will no doubt be amplified, but not even Eric Ten Hag's dream signing will be able to give United the backbone they lacked on Sunday afternoon, as they were torn apart by the side that had humbled them at the end of last season too. Brighton are well drilled and disciplined under the guidance of Graham Potter, and despite losing Eve Bissouma to Tottenham this summer, they managed to keep Moises Caicedo, a player United looked at signing themselves 18 months ago. The 20-year-old Ecuadorian midfielder bossed the midfield battle as United helplessly watched on. Fred struggled to keep possession with a string of sloppy passes, and Scott McTominay appeared flustered in a role that granted him more freedom than usual but still demanded defensive discipline. Following the summer acquisition of Christian Eriksen, United certainly have the silk in their midfield, but they still lack the steel. Until they do, they'll never be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their biggest domestic rivals, or their mid-table ones either. The Dane started for United as a false nine, but his case wasn't helped by the fact that they were deploying two false central midfielders in Fred and McTominay who, despite their hard work and energy, are both technically limited. Ironically, the United midfield selection is better suited to playing against the best in matches when their side is not expected to dominate proceedings or require creativity from deep. However, against the smaller sides, particularly at home, there is an onus to attack, something that encourages them to push forward and regularly exposes their shortcomings. Ten Hag had hoped to compensate for United's lack of deep-lying specialists by adapting his tactical approach to simply control the game instead and alleviate such a need. It might work in the long run, but right now it isn't, and he might not have the time to work on it if results don't begin to improve. Until they manage to sign a specialist midfielder, United won't be able to match up toe-to-toe -to -toe with the leading sides in the Premier League, and they won't be able to cope with many others either. An improvement was felt when Fred was replaced by Cristiano Ronaldo eight minutes after the restart, forcing Eriksen into a deeper midfield role, which gave United the creativity they craved and ensured they had a player who could dictate the tempo and make things happen from the center of the park. Diogo Dalot's goal came from a corner that was forced by a low effort from Eriksen, a moment of inspiration he conjured up when there was little else available for him. For matches against lesser sides, it seems like playing the Danish playmaker deeper is the blueprint required to ensure they are able to effectively break down their opponents, given the passing range and composure he brings to the role. McFurd should only be a last resort for occasions in which they have to accept an underdog status. There might be a few of those this season, though. Subscribe to my YouTube channel MUFC Hot Sports for more information about Manchester United.